Another two close games for your Friday night here in round one of 2023 NRL fantasy season. We had the Warriors up against the Knights, 20 to 12 victors in this one, which was great. And then a very strange one and a bit of an upset, but the Broncos played great and beat the Panthers 13-12. I'm doing this reaction video straight after that Panthers game, guys. So it's all fresh in my mind. I have a busy day with work and I'm actually going to the Manly game at three o'clock tomorrow. So plenty going on. We'll get this video done now and out early morning for you guys to view before that uh, big Saturday slate. I hope that helps you guys out in your decisions for the rest of the week if you are making any more and also your review for next week guys. And if you are just seeing this one, you haven't seen the Thursday night one, make sure you go back and check out each of them guys, especially when you've got some plenty of time waiting for each of the games uh, on, on the Saturday and the Sunday there and also that Monday morning waiting for that uh, first few videos with the round results. So I have the updated numbers here, which you'll see obviously in the morning, which will be updated there. But Tohu Harris, an amazing game for him. He ends up with 70, not 69 there. So uh, a spectacular game from him. And what I saw there was obviously 80 minutes, but Tohu evolved really. You know, those games he played 80 minutes last year, but he didn't look anything like that. The tackle numbers were incredible, obviously at 51. That fell away a little bit at the end, but he was in everything in that first half, making repeated efforts. And that's something that I didn't see as much from him last year, along with the run meters, you know, up at that 140 mark. That really wasn't where he was at last year at all. You know, a lot of time it'd be, you know, 110, 90, these types of things here. And then obviously the less minutes hurts him as well. So we spoke about Tohu having about six points of value, price of 48, about a 54 average there. Might be, might be closer to, to where he was in 2021 and also 2020. So be aware of, of Tohu, guys. Definitely a solid option, but I know a lot of people already are coming out and going, oh, I'm going to blow up my team, basically, to, to get these guys. The rest of the round hasn't even finished yet. You know, someone asked me, you know, do I trade Robson out for Grant? And Robson hadn't even played yet. So those types of questions, guys, just save all of those. Oh, should I trade this guy? Should I bring this guy in? Do I react you know, really quickly like that? Save all that for once all the games are done, or at least getting close to that last game, maybe if you don't have any players in your side or, or something like that in the last one, or they're not going to be affected by certain guys. But you, know, you could have a couple of injuries in your outside backs and then you can't even touch any of your front, you know, your front, your mid rotation, for example. Also, you do have, you, you did select these guys for a reason. So unless they have an issue, you know, the Makatoa situation where it looks like he's not going to get the 40 minutes. So I'd be moving on from him. Thankfully, you could loop him. But those types of things, good. But other than that, just wait and see what happens. So Toru Harris, incredible start. Wade Egan, he ended up at a, a 65, which was a uh, 64 as well. So he stayed there. And the 66 minutes was probably less than we would have thought, guys. But the try assist and also the try, he did a terrific job for the Warriors and helped them get over the line. I actually tipped the Warriors in this one, so I was very happy with that after tipping the Eels last night. So, Wade, well done if you picked him up at the 582 clip. Obviously, you know, sort of that low 40s type of, of score there. And, you know, we see with him sometimes, if he gets the big minutes and he doesn't have the, you know, the tries, the, the tackle bus, the, the try assist there. You see there the 33 tackles is pretty normal, the 50 run meters and a couple of missed tackles. So he's very easily able to get a 35-40, but well done if you picked Wade Egan. Barnett, so he ended up with a, with a nice score as well. He ended up with a 57, which was pretty good for his 50 minutes. And was that expected through the middle 50 minutes? I'd say so. Was that good of a score expected? No, but he also did get a line break this game and yeah, you know, three turnover tackles. So very high on that front. I wouldn't expect that every week. You know, the five missed tackles, the 45 in base, pretty fair. Uh, that usually puts him in that mid 40s range and that is his price. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, well done if you picked up Barnett. There's not a heap of guys going for him at the moment, uh, but the dual position is, is also fun. Okay, Braley in there at 51. So he didn't have a spectacular game. The Knights really didn't in general. So he was solid in, in his time out in the park. And really, you take that when he's priced a little bit under 50, you'll take the 51 in this game. No attacking stats here. Just tackled hard and did a little bit, you know, one kick out of dummy half, 29 run meters. So take the 51. He was okay, but yeah, not spectacular. Fitzgibbon, we won't bother with. Charles Nicol Klukstar, he was in my preseason team all season long. He's actually really highly owned at the 11%, which is great. So really happy for everyone who took that uh, selection there. I just decided that I wanted to go a little bit heavier. And just remember guys, this is a game where they played a Knights team that are pretty poor you know, in that first game. They're not going to play this type of team every week. For example, they played the Roosters next week. So Chance you know, might not be able to sneak that try. But that base there, the 10 tackles and zero misses, is probably a little bit higher than normal. 
But, you know, a couple of tackle breaks there, you know, two offloads, all, all good signs there for Chance to, to pick up that 51. So well done to, to Chance and anyone who owned him at 30, uh, 372K. He'll be up over 400 next week. So awesome, awesome stuff there. For Noah Blake, low minutes for him. 46 was a bit strange. Should he get more than that? I think he should, but we'll see what happens there. Farnett's going to be the bigger minute guy. I think that's probably a little bit of an anomaly there. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan Saifidi. So he ended up with a, a solid score there of 47 and updated too, which is good. And with him there, solid. Again, you're looking here at 125 meters, 29 tackles, three tackle breaks. Can he, can he do better than that? I think he can. Do we need to see it before we even look at him? Yes, but obviously he's someone that was, you know, some people were talking about him at the start of the season, uh, start of the you know, preseason there, but hasn't uh, hasn't gone through uh, with the with the goods in terms of his preseason tr form, which you know really pushed a lot of people away from him. Hastings got forty six guys, so he made one above his break even, which is fine with how the game was played uh, and how they played especially. So his consistency in terms of his base was what I was really high on. And then if they could play all right with that you know, lesser draw at the start, he was going to do really well. I still see him averaging a tad over 50. A 46 there is a bit of a nothing game. A couple of false dropouts, you know, 19 tackles, two misses, a couple of goals, 119 run meters, 350 kick meters. Again, getting a bit of everything across the park and it's exactly what you want. So Hastings, I think you'll be fine. If you picked him up and it's still you know 3.5%, I think there's no stress there. Why do they not have the pitches on these guys? Really? Come on, sort it out. Sean Johnson, so he ended up with a 46 as well. So he was he was solid. Did a couple of good things there. He got the line break, which was good early on in the game uh, and set up you know, a few bits and pieces there, which was good. He had the, the three tackle breaks, plenty of kick meters, some small run meters. So pretty well exactly how we would have thought. And if they're going to win a few games, then he's going to be able to do a few good things there for the Warriors. But again, worrying next week, how it's going to happen when they come up against the Roosters, for example. But well done if you selected Johnson. In the first one, he gets, uh, he's up a little bit from his uh, where he's priced at. Lockie Miller with the 43. So a lot of people are saying to me, oh, you know, happy with that Lockie Miller pick. He, he seems very, very Teddy-like in terms of, you know, where he's around the around the ruck and, and just looking to run and run and run. And, you know, especially if early Teddy in uh, in Tigers days, and I can definitely see that as well. I mean, that's the reason we picked him, right? I spoke about him getting that 29, which is a break even just in, you know, run meters and tackle breaks, you know, very easily. And he didn't really have a great game, to be honest with you. And he's still with 11 tackle breaks and the 174 meters. You know, he kicked the ball out in the full. He had a couple of missed tackles, two in one play, really. So not ideal. But 43, we take from him. He's, that's 14 above his break even, guys. So for those that were fading Miller, probably not the best idea. But they do come up against Roosters next week. Does he get as many uh, tackle breaks in that one? That's the question mark you need to ask uh, yourself there. But, you know, if you started with him, Awesome. If you didn't start with him, eh, do you bother trying to pick him up now? Probably not anyway. Jackson Ford. This was a fun one for us. Absolute whirlwind of a game, to be honest with you. He got four tackles in the first set, and I was cheering, and then I don't think he had another... I think he had one or two more tackles in the next 15 minutes or something. It was a bit strange. Yeah, that's the thing with these edge forwards. There's a lot that goes on, right? Uh, you know, in terms of a lot of traffic goes through the middle, and then you can go the other side at different times, and it's uh, hard to work out. So tackles were pretty low. He played the full 80, which was amazing. It's what we were hoping for. It did look like Nia Kore was going to be getting that spell when Curran comes on, and that's exactly what happened. So that looked like that in the trials, and that's exactly what happened, which is awesome. But how good was his little in and away to get around the uh, on down the wing there and, and make plenty of meters there? So he ended up with the 150 for that reason, which was good. 149 come on give him an extra one just for one more point but uh yeah all right the the 43 points for him was cool we got a couple offloads in there um, which again guys they only have got the offloads in here just as uh offload to floor as just the two points but it does uh, it is actually updated properly in the actual score on the left there so just be aware of that it says the offloads of two which both of his uh went to went to hand and uh that gives you eight points so two to the ground four to the hand uh, yeah, the line break and everything. So looks like he's actually going to be a pretty solid player, which is good. If he can get some big minutes for these guys, that's going to be hectic. Uh, Leo Thompson was really solid as well. He got a he got a really nice score there of 39 off the bench, which was good. Uh, all in base, the so 34 tackles there. So plenty of tackles for these middles in the Knights. You see Kurt Mann, for example, getting 43, which is lovely. Heimel Hunt, a few people asked me about him. Is he a, an option at 250K? 4.3% went for him. Greg Marzus would be back, but Heimel Hunt had a solid game, got a try, and 33, so he'll make a little bit of cash. 
Nikore, we spoke about not being an option just because he probably wasn't get the, going to get the 80 and he got priced up too much and that you know, came to fruition, unfortunately. Not exactly what we want, but it's what it is with him. Uh, tried to push most people away and it looks like 1.4% you know, went for him. So yeah, not many, which is good. Bradman Best, the 31. Adam Elliott, going to be great to see his price come really down, but the six missed tackles for him is concerning. So I'm glad we didn't end up starting with him. You know, that 56 minutes was... Probably what he's going to play anyway, 60, 65 maybe if he starts. But I don't know, does he even start straight away? It looks like he's you know being hampered a little bit. He definitely wasn't running with the same vigor and the same force that he was at the Raiders. So just be aware of that. Ponga Hina with 31, which is okay. He did get a turnover. They It was weird. Him and um him and Lockie Miller had a try saver and they didn't count it. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on, on, that, on that one, guys. It happens a few times. Uh, you know, Chan's got one, I'm pretty sure. He should have, where does it say, Chansey at the top. How did they not get hit? He did not get one either. Maybe that's what they put in to make him 51. Well, I'll find out in the morning. You guys will tell me anyway in the comments. Uh, by this point, we should know. But yeah, uh, Ponga the 31. So he actually looked pretty good as one of their bright spots in that team, to be honest with you. And he defended pretty solidly. He only had the one miss. Uh, a couple of errors in there. Again, had to go off for a HIA. He just, any sort of touch on his head and... He must just look a bit, because I remember there's been a few where he hasn't even got hit in the head and they like take him off last year, the year before. So that's the big worry with him. And 31, look, it's not great when you're paying that much, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So yeah, is what it is. To Marty Martin, this is pretty much exactly what I said. He wouldn't get much. He'd you know, have a solid base, 18 tackles. The one missed, he ended up with 25. So that's okay. Uh, you'll cop that. It's still you know, a little bit, uh, two, three points above his break even, which is fine. But yeah, 44 run meters, had the one forced uh, tackle, turnover tackle, which he tackled the boy out, and one line break assist to the great Jackson Ford. But yeah, Tamati, that's exactly what we thought. Yeah, if they get some attacking stats, awesome. Uh, but other than that, I think he'll work into that role. And you know, he can do okay for you in the wing fullbacks, but he's not going to break any records for you. Tom Ali only got a few minutes there. Josh Curran, the four in the 20 minutes. So didn't didn't even run the ball. Crazy. So avoid him for now. Cross the neg three in his 15 minutes. So that was great. You got a nice sin bin in there in that one so that's that one guys and we'll move to the panthers v the broncos and this one it won't be updated completely but just a, a final thought on the warriors and knights again all lower scoring games to start off this one warriors looked okay better than the knights they definitely deserve to win this game but they will have a couple of tough games coming up now something to be aware of if you're looking at some of the outside backs you know chance is going to have a decent base Tolko Harris is really not going to matter at the moment at all. He's the kind of guy that I'd be looking at in that side. Chance, yeah, definitely keep an eye on him. And then Jackson Ford, I think, to me, pretty important. So he had a lot of negatives, guys, and I think he can come out and, and do still do really well on a week, on, week in, week out, week out basis. Especially if a guy that you got mid and edge jewel for 340k. 80 minutes, whew, got to pick him up. Okay, so thankfully for me, the guys that I was scared of, that I wanted to have in my side, that I didn't end up starting with, they're out of the way. Harry Grant and Pat Garrigan. And we will start with Patty and that's 62 for him. He just gets involved in all the tackles and that's his biggest thing. You see here, 153 meters, 50 tackles. So 65 in base there and just the two negatives, the one flop that he had and the one missed tackle. So he just, you know, guys can run real hard to his right or left and he can, he's got a real good grip strength. You see, like I saw a couple of times he's holding around the jersey or something like that and keeping a hold of him and not getting that missed tackle, which is great. Uh, and then in attack, he didn't really look to offload at all, but they did you know, cover him up really well. Um, you know, even Payne Haas, for example, he got one offload. And you know, majority of the time, he was you know, bumping off. A, uh, you know, a guy was coming out of line, he was getting a tackle break that way, or he was kind of bumping and, and running off to the side. So whereas Carrigan was just like, get forward, get a quick play of the ball. But 70 minutes for him. The only issue I see here is the fact that Tony Staggs had a bit of time off the park. So... Minutes-wise, for Carrigan, how's that going to work? Is he going to get 70? Is he going to get 65, 60? You know, really, if he gets around that 65, he's still going to be a 56, 55, 57 type of player, which, you know, will be enough. Uh, and, you know, if he gets a 70, amazing. Then he's an average 60. So, I, as I said, he's someone I wanted in my, in my side. Decided to go with Haas, obviously. Uh, be much more consistent for a longer period of time. The 27 tackles would have been nice if he bumped that up to about 35, but... 
yeah, we'll take it there for, for pain in this one. The eight tackle breaks was great. 200 meters, he was spectacular. So we'll see how the updates and down dates go. Uh, there's a guy a little bit lower on that I want to go up a little bit, but we'll see what happens there. Payne has to 66 minutes. If he can get that every week, he's going to be an absolute killer. 65, 70 each and every week in terms of his points. So, yeah, going to be a great captaincy option in round three for those that have Cleary. Oh, Cleary. Sad. 49. Oh, well. It happens. He only, it's very strangely, Cleary's the only dead spot in my side at the moment. Everyone's going really well. Obviously, I don't have Grant or... Uh, or Carrigan, but everyone that I've picked, the cheaper guys especially, have done great, so that's good. Uh, Reynolds, really solid game. We saw last year when they were having a good start to their season that he was doing really well, scoring really well. When I decided to bring him in, I think the head-to-head squad, he then got injured, and that was that. But 600 kick meters for him for the 20 points. 27 tackles, one miss. Yeah, anything on top of that is going to be great. Field goal, try assist. Does a bit of everything. 65 was awesome. Liam Martin, this is one of those games, he always gets people early. You know, he gets that 60 early and then everyone looks to bring him in. Oh, wow, he's kind of cheap. You know, 568, 590, whatever he's going to be next week. Uh, and then he'll come out and get 80 minutes uh, eighty minutes for 35 points. But he's looking better and better each week. Why the hell, or how the hell, did he drop that ball over the line for, you know, for Cleary's try? And then we had Garner's little, you know, miss air swing as well uh, for the grubber. So Cleary, not much went, him, went his way, uh, but definitely no excuses. The Panthers were not very good, to be honest with you, in this one. Until Sonny Luke came on, that's the only time they looked a little bit better, which yeah, we've spoken about uh, at length in this offseason that he's going to be that guy to come on and, and be that sort of appy kind of role. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. Obviously, there was you know, late in the piece and he had to kind of you know, spark them and, and try to get them back in the game. But yeah, very, very interesting how that's uh, all going to play out for the for the Panthers boys because they you know, really didn't play too well. Panthers, uh, Broncos were great, right? Like, yeah, Penrith threw a fair bit at them, but they just didn't have the answers that they usually would, which is very interesting. And Appy, you know, is usually someone that can do that. Dylan Edwards had a solid game, but he had a couple of errors and stuff. So interesting there for sure. Okay, Isaiah Yo, the 59 for him. Again, that 80 minutes, anytime he gets there in these types of games, he's going to get his, his he's going to hit his break even around that 60 mark. So Yo, great each and every week. Mitch Kenny. Very interesting. Didn't look great out of nine, but obviously defensively, 54 tackles. They said he's their defensive guy in their side and, and he's going to do a lot of that work. Is he going to stay in this role 68 minutes long term? I just don't see it. I think Luke has to play more minutes for them to do well. He looks solid enough to be able to do it. So Kenny, I still think is a wait and see until round four as to what happens there. But yeah, at 426, if you went for him, there's a you know 8% that did. Congratulations, you did awesome. Yeah, having, it depends, you know, I don't know how many like, really good coaches are picking Kenny at the start here, but if you did, you know, you did really, really well there. You know, Isaiah Yo 6.6 as well. I haven't seen Yo in many teams um, that I've been following anyway, but yeah, Kenny was 53, well done. Dylan Edwards, a 52 for him. So he still scored really well. 270 meters was great. Yeah, the line break and the try assist. Yeah, you know, it was just that that one error that, that really turned the tides, I think. You know, Cleary is about to get a good kick away and I think it was about halfway. Um, it was just a really random one from him, but yeah, overall he was solid, but they needed a little bit more out of him and, and a few of these other guys for sure. Leota did everything he could in, in 42 minutes there, you know, to get 52 points, 150 meters, 32 run, uh, 32 tackles was great. Cleary, here he is. So yeah, unfortunately skip up this week. Would have been nice to have uh, Hopgood as skip like we we're talking about instead of vice, but yeah, it is what it is. This happens sometimes guys. Yeah, you know, if they don't play super well, he can usually sneak that 50 or so. You know, if, if they were to come back and get a good win, he'd you know, usually slice through the line and score a try and get him up to about 60, 70. But wasn't to beat. You know, the two tackle breaks, thankfully, had a couple of forced uh, turnover tackles, which was good. Uh, but the two errors, that unlucky one at the end, yeah, is what it is. Uh, and a couple of missed tackles there. But no try assists, no tries, two goals. Kick meters were down compared to normal. So just a low game for him. And he should be okay next week, guys. they got a big one against the Bunnies, and they really need to win that one to you know, show that they're still the Premiers and they're the best team in the comp. Farmworth, really interesting uh, game for him. He did really, really well. The two tries early and then kind of slowed it down from there. But you know, he shows that he has plenty of firepower. And I was super excited with Ezra Mam on that side as well. Very surprised he didn't score a lot better than he looked, Ezra. Obviously, the lack of kick meters is a big one for him. But the seven missed tackles killed him. So... Yeah, Farnworth, solo one, 570. He's going to be one of those you know, guns near the end of the season, for sure. Uh, Ezra Mam, I'll speak to him now as I really like that left side. He, he had that awesome line break and try assist there, which was good. And I think he's going to be very helpful for them this year. That's 39 when he played really well. 
is the concern for him as a fantasy player. I think he did great. And, you know, has he got much more growth on that? There'll be games where he gets 50 with less missed tackles uh, and a try or something himself. But week to week, I don't think so. Fitch Harris, I think he was uh, nullified a bit in this one. They didn't, you know, he didn't do as well as I think he normally would. You know, the two tackle breaks, 112 meters is really low for him. So to get that up next week, I think will uh, really help their side uh, with a bit of go forward there. Ricky was 47. Again, a couple of people picked him at 3%. Nothing too special there. Luai, the 44, was, yeah, higher compared to, you know, how he normally is, to be fair, in this type of game when they you know, he didn't play that great, team didn't play that great, just real no negatives there, which is really strange. But Corey Prakes, I think he really improves in this game, guys. He looked like a much better player. Obviously, a younger player, a couple of years in the league now. Him and Walters, I think, were much better than last year, just, you know, straight up. And that's that really helped them. And, you know, they got Reese Walsh to come back, Cobo back on his wing. Yeah, I think, I think there's uh, great signs for the for the Broncos heading into this season. So 41 in 36 minutes there, the 32 tackles through the middle, him and Carrigan just going nuts. Um, two turnover tackles there as well. Sonny Luke, the 39 guys, or whatever he is going to end up on with that 26 minutes. So he ended up with that try at the end. You know, no real negatives there, just the one error. Uh, 65 run meters, turnover tackle in there, couple of tackle breaks, 13 tackles for no misses. Great. Uh, you know, considering I'm a non-owner, Kind of wish he didn't score that try, but yeah, good to see that he is going to be a pretty solid player. And, and hopefully next week we can see if he's going to get in the minutes. And if he does, we can pick him up in round four. If he gets the business next week and scores well again, well done for starting with him. Yeah, there's been a few of the cheap guys that have started really well at the moment, hasn't there? So very, very interesting. Corey Jensen ended up with 48 minutes, guys, and that seems about stock standard, 45. So can the can the minutes for these middles keep up? Yeah, we saw uh, Tapao there getting lower minutes there coming on pretty late in the game so maybe he's the guy that plays at 30 off the bench which is going to be interesting tango i think he was really good guys overall he looked like he has improved didn't really get any chances at all but the 35 for him scoring wise not great but he looked great uh, overall Crichton was a bit up and down to be honest with you the five missed tackles the error had that nice try at the start of the game but other than that they didn't really look like scoring did they so Crichton 34 total 28 uh and and taruva 26 there all just okay scores, but again, they're not going to go great when the Panthers are struggling. Uh, but you know, don't stress too much on the guys like To'o, for example, because he will come out and have better tackle break games and stuff like that. My main concern, guys, with To'o is the fact that he's only had that one really big season. And other than that, he hasn't exceeded that 40 average. And we wanted him to go to the left, and unfortunately, that did not happen. He stayed on the right there. And looks like that's the way they're going to play it with Taruva on the left. So very, very interesting with Toa. I definitely will be waiting and see what happens next week, how he looks, if he can have a bit of a tackle busting big game, or if he's going to struggle with that uh, going forward. But yeah, that's that with those guys. Salmon, so he ended up coming on for Luke Garner, guys. So Salmon, ir irrelevant at this point. Garner, very relevant to talk about because he's at the 13% ownership and you know, owned by a lot of guys that uh yeah uh, having a, cr a real crack at, at winning this whole thing so garner the 26 he looked okay to be honest with you missed the three tackles had the one penalty there 97 run meters in that 50 minutes there is is solid you'll take that 23 tackles for the three misses not good he did miss uh one or two on on house which is lovely for me but especially not being a non-garner owner but i wouldn't be panic stations exactly on garner you want to have a look at next week and then make your decision. But if he gets 50 minutes and Salmon's going to be that guy to play 30, then he needs to go out of your side in round three when they have the bye. So be aware of that coming into next week. Stagsy, what an up and down game for him that was. You had him starting really well defensively at eight tackles for no miss, uh, no misses there. And then unfortunately got a little head knock on the way through, made him go off until you know, just before half time there. And then you know 15 minutes to go in the game, he's, de he's dealing with cramps. So if you're a Stags owner in this one, you're just not happy at all, unfortunately. 26, though, you will take because it could have been a lot worse than that, to be honest with you. It, you know, the type of game that that he can have sometimes. Negatives are plenty. You only had the one missed tackle in this one. Usually he's got errors galore, etc. there. But 36 run meters is just not good enough. You know, we're looking for a guy. He had one, he had like three runs and one of them was awesome. He almost like darted through like three players and, and, all, and snuck through the other side. And that's where we got the two tackle breaks, guys. So... Stagsy, there's a bunch of people that selected him. He's a 10.5% owned, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but I definitely think he's, you know, he can be okay. But a little bit of worry for he, about him for sure. Walters, yeah, we spoke about him. Spencer Lanyu, so he had the 25 points. Again, not really relevant. 34 minutes is good. Uh, and he, he will have a better PPM than that most games. He should be able to get about 34 
in that 34 minutes, which is good to battle. So with him there, he had that 24 points within the 19 minutes. So he did a, a decent job. He bumped off one of the blokes and then he got bumped off as well, which was funny. Uh, but yeah, way too expensive. And yeah, the minutes wise there, the 20, if he gets 25 to 30, 20 each week, then Carrigan and Hash should get the big minutes. So we're thinking Tapau, uh, Tapau sorry, would probably be getting close to that 40 mark in terms of mins, but didn't happen. Sorensen went down early with his head knock. That was uh, not nice, that one at all. Palacio, we said, you know, 33 minutes would probably be fair. Flegler, about the same, 40. Palacio, probably a little, a little bit more than we thought. Corey Oates, a couple of tough errors there. Cobo, if you picked him, there's going to be a few, 10 and a half. Wow. Uh, big percentage there, guys, in the fullback position. Four errors, you know, very much the same as he did last year on the wing when he first started, so not good at all. Hosking, how far away is Zach Hosking? That is the question that we're going to ask ourselves to finish off this Friday wrap-up, guys. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed those two games. I'm so excited for the three-game Saturday slate. Get into that Thursday video, guys, and absolutely smash this Friday one. I can't wait for a big Saturday and to watch Tommy Turbo.